Yo, people! So, I just thought I'd uh, show you guys what I've been working on. Uh, actually, for the last two days. Most of it was today, but a little bit yesterday. Um, this is a pile of cedar. Um, and, of course, that is the sawmill back there. And um, I'm going to be building raised beds for the garden putting up the greenhouse and i'm still going uh through the process of figuring out exactly what design what style i'm going to use for the raised beds but right now i'm leaning towards using the metal roofing uh, material for the side walls as the primary um body of it i guess you could say and then using cedar basically to make the framing and the borders and all that kind of stuff for trim and then i'm going to use uh, cedar boards also for the um, lower part the bottom section of the of the greenhouse even though the design that we bought this greenhouse it's not meant to be done this way but basically i'm just going to use the panels and some of the aluminum framing with um, with a wooden base and uh, still not sure I'm going to do the foundation I'm thinking I'm going to go with cinder block and then uh, and then like a base plate on that to attach it to so it can be anchored but still working on that exact plan uh, but this is some of the wood that I already milled that's all uh, that's all cedar it's not a ton yet I mean I still got that whole pile over there to keep working on but um, quite a bit of the one by that'll be the edging and, and trim some two by and a couple of four by fours uh, a lot of that that I have over there some of the smaller ones I'll just turn into four by fours or almost four by four they're, they're gonna be rough cut so they don't have to be perfect um, and they're going to go on the inside to support the frame of the greenhouse, or not the greenhouse, the frame of the raised beds. Um, so, yeah, that's what I've been working on. And if you look up here, me and Mrs. Howell took the roof off of this uh, little makeshift woodshed that we've got back here because wind already had done half the job for us. Um, yeah, the wind had already taken off and broke half of it, so we went ahead and took it all down. Um, this whole thing's going to come apart, and we're going to we're going to build a better, actual, good quality one to last. Uh, this was done as a makeshift because we didn't want to use tarps uh, for our firewood, and it did its job; it worked. Um, but yeah, it was it was never intended to be the full-time long-term plan but I was kind of hoping it would have lasted a little bit longer than one season um, but that's all right we're gonna make this work and we're gonna redo and make a better one that's gonna be the right good quality the size that will hold for us I think it's gonna be eight cord um, we use about four cord of wood uh, every winter and Look what I just left this on the ground. That's my cover for my saw. I don't want to mess up my blade or my chain. So got to make sure I keep that. Um, but real quick, let's walk back here. I'll show you some of the remnants. I still got to clean up this mess that I got. But uh, like I said, I've been out here harvesting the cedar. And cleaning some of this area out so here's the tops of the cedar all that that's all the little small stuff that isn't really useful for milling or even fence posts um, there's the bottoms 
There was a group of three right here that I cut down. One, two, three. And then those are just little bits uh, that were left. And there goes the Maniac Max. Um, and then if we go back this way, snow's starting to melt a little bit, but still got some patches of ice and snow. So I cut this old pine down a while back. It was rotten and bad and dead. And it had this barbed wire running right through it. It had grown around the barbed wire. And I want to say that over there, the barbed wire goes through that cedar by my chair. Um, but this is another one I got to cut down eventually. It's dead and rotten. And I'm pretty sure that it's going to end up falling and just laying right across the brook right there. Um, but I'm going to wait and see. Woodpeckers and stuff, they love to poke at it and find bugs. So I'm not going to cut it down right now. There's a cedar log that was left from last year, but it was covered with snow and ice. It's available now. I've got to come drag it out. My nasty ruts that I made with the tractor. Um, and then this, so that's the stump from one of the cedars that I cut down. I fell it that way and then it split into two sections and those are the top ends that I might end up dragging out. Might be able to use them, I don't know yet. And then this one here that's leaning real bad, it's pretty much dead also. It's dead standing. It's got a little life in it and I'm hoping that it's not rotten. Um, this one had, that's the very bottom right there, that had quite a bit of rot. And then as I worked my way up, it got less and less of this rot. So I just kept cutting, uh, you know, about five, six inches off at a time until I got to a point where it was pretty much solid all the way in. Um, that way I can cut some decent planks. I made it nine feet long and then when I do the planks I, I need them to be eight feet so I should be able to cut off the bad stuff on any of them that are that have bad stuff on them this is what's left of another one that I cut that I harvested I cut that off right there it was leaning up here fell down between those trees that was a pain and there's still a bunch of brush down here that uh, branches and things I cut off of that one and actually you can see a couple small cedar logs down there I'm probably just gonna leave those right next to the brook by the bank and they'll just make a nice little border right on the edge no big deal I don't I don't need them they have quite a bit of rot um, but I got another one I don't know if you can really see it very good on the camera but right there off in the distance I cut that down a while back and that was actually the video where I got my tractor stuck was when I was trying to pull some logs out of that area over there. Um, and as you can see, where you got mud, lots of wet, soggy, crazy dogs running around. Um, but yeah, this area right here, it is real, just soggy. Anything, if I try to drive the tractor through here, this is right where I got stuck. Had to work my way out with the backhoe and the bucket. But see that tree there, that's a decent cedar that I need to limb up and then I need to cut. So the bottom I'll probably end up cutting some off because you can see it's got a little bit of rot which hopefully doesn't go up more than about a foot. Probably end up cutting somewhere up and around here and it should be solid again. And then I'm thinking I can get two nine foot decent size uh, logs out of that. That I can mill into 
some four by fours and one by fours, maybe a couple of one by sixes. Uh, that little cedar back over here, I laid that down to the other when I did this one. But that one right there, it's quite a bit smaller. I probably only get one decent size, uh, eight or nine foot out of that because the rest of this up here tapers off real small real quick um, but you see a lot of this over here too I still got to get back since I can't get the tractor in here I'm gonna have to come in by hand and like that tree there that's firewood but I'm gonna have to cut it chop it down into 16 inch 18 inch pieces and then carry it out by hand because I can't get can't get any kind of machinery tractor or none of that in here even trying to bring the gorilla cart it's more of a pain than just walking in and out and just carrying the stuff uh, two or three decent sized logs um, if I cut it a couple of feet long then I can just haul out one log at a time and I can bring the tractor in here um, basically you know to a safe place where I know I won't get um, I won't get stuck and I can just kind of drag those things in and out as needed stick them into the bucket use the forks I'll put the forks on the bucket and um, and then haul them out that way but the cedar it's easy enough i can actually cut those to an eight or even nine foot length and i can usually pick those up and just carry it out myself it's not super heavy wood it's actually pretty lightweight wood so carrying those out is it isn't terribly difficult um at least not the size that that one is some of the real big ones well bigger ones that i had i had to use a tractor to, uh, to pick those up and move them but that tree is not that big around so I should be able to carry an eight foot section without too much problem um, and then you know some of that like that's maple that one that I showed you was laid down there's a popple back there laid down um, those are much heavier they're more dense they weigh much more per uh, square inch or whatever you want to call it um, so those I'd have to cut if so since they're going to be firewood they'll be like 16 inch is what I cut the firewood length um, so then I'll cut them basically about 32 inches about three foot or so and and carry them out in a three foot piece that's something I can manage to carry without too much problem load those in a bucket of the tractor haul it out and then um, and then cut them in half and split them and stack them for next year um, but yeah that's what I've been working on um, right now I, I put my chair out here in the woods um, because sometimes I just like to sit out here and just relax it's super super chill super peaceful um, Max goes wandering around in the woods and if I can't see him I just whistle he comes running matter of fact I can see right now he's getting a little bit further out there than what I prefer um, he's sniffing around he smells all the deer right now there's a lot with the melting going on and some of the stuff that's starting to grow back the deer are starting to come through more to nibble on the little some of the little buds and things that are just starting to come up and he smells them back here and just goes crazy he loves it um but let's see if we can get him back here he's getting kind of off let's see can you i don't think you guys could even see him he's he's back in there right now but let's see what happens when i whistle for him all right he should have heard that and he should be making his way over here but 
I don't see him or hear him yet. Which means I'm going to have to give another one. Nope, he heard it. Look, here it comes. He's right up. He's coming that way. I just saw him cut. Oh, there it goes this way. He's trying to find his way through all that brush. He can't run through that brush very fast. And he gets probably sinking down in the mud. Whoa, 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 buddy. Okay, 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 okay. Calm down. Good boy. Good boy. All right, Mr. Crazy Dog. You need to stay where I can see you. All right? All right, go ahead, but stay where I can see you. Nutty dog. All right, well, that is that. I just thought I'd uh, share what I've been up to. I'm getting excited. Spring, it is it is spring. It's officially here. Still having some below freezing temperatures and snow on the ground and all that in our area. So it doesn't feel as much like spring yet, but it's spring. There's a lot of signs that show me that it's spring, so I'm getting excited and um, getting outside and doing some more stuff to prepare for the beautiful, wonderful time that we enjoy during spring, summer, and fall before next winter. So, thanks for watching. Definitely come back, check us out again, see what we're up to, uh, see how Max is doing with his crazy self, and we will keep you informed on what we're doing hopefully i get this greenhouse and raised beds built i'll show you how that comes out like subscribe you know what all that nonsense is all right we'll see you guys on the next one